Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the phone all the way from his secret location somewhere in the world, he is one of the most influential people on the planet, dare I say, most important person on the planet when it comes to his work, won more accolades than most of us have ever dreamed about, including a knight of the British Empire, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sir Bob Geldof. Thanks, <laughs> how, how was that for a wind-up for you? I know, you know, it doesn't get more embarrassing than that. <laughs> Um, a lot of uh, questions uh, to, to cover, obviously, uh, you're a very important person, we want to take too much of your time up, but uh, how do I um, address you? Is it Sir Bob? Is it uh, Sir Bobby? Mr. Geldof? How, how do I go about it? Bob is fine, but if you want something more intimate, then I'm sure we can come up with several. <laughs> See, I, I love the name Sir Bobby Geldof. Go with it. Go with it. Sounds shit to me, but you know, they do if you're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so, Bobby, um, obviously you, you've you've won more awards than you probably have wall space for. And of all the awards that you've uh, had to achieve and, and and been given, what would be your favourite one to walk around going, you know what, I have that? Last month, uh, I don't know if you know about the South by Southwest Festival in Austin and Texas. Uh, it's an amazing thing. It lasts uh, over a week, and something like a thousand pounds play there uh, in every bar, every cafe, in every hotel lobby, in between the bars and cafes out on the street. It's just endless, endless music. And, um, you know, big bands, uh, just neighborhood bands, people who've only ever played in their bedrooms, they all go and play there. And they hope to, they go for the, the love, but I thought they were going to get discovered and that absolutely not. They're just going to play at this place. And uh, we were down there opening the Austin City Theatre, the new one. And the next night we played in the car park at this Tex-Mex restaurant. I mean, it's fantastic. Anyway, uh, we were down there doing that. And I got presented with, without question, uh, the most prestigious award in my career. And especially at, at, at this age I am. Um, the Austin Chronicle, which is the local series paper, and the actual South by Southwest Festival uh, gave me this award jointly. They presented me with a plaque, and um, I have it in, pro as, as you pointed out, I have an already overstuffed trophy room, <laughs> and it is a private place. It is the South by Southwest Festival Groupies Choice Award. <laughs> Um, well, that, that's absolutely fantastic. I, I would love to present you with a plaque as well, but I'm not that rich, so can I just print well, some of the prints? I don't want to group his choice award for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to name you the, uh, the Captain's Man of the Year Award and just print something off a photocopy of it. Uh... Well, well, you know, I, I, I texted Bono. I'm not name dropping, but he said, <laughs> I, te I texted him and I said, well, I actually said, you know, um, you know, that, that I'm quite secure in the knowledge that this is one award that he will never get. <laughs> and within nanoseconds came the text back, yes, I heard there was an elderly category in that particular <laughs> award. <laughs> I, I just love how you said, I just texted Bono, like that's a, an everyday occurrence where I, I'm lucky to get a text message from my mother, let alone from Bono, but uh, I've tried. Yeah, but but I your, your, mother, your mother doesn't love you, but Bono probably does. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad that we're on the same page there. Obviously, you've met my mum, um, or read her blog, one of the two. But, uh, yeah, no, she, she seriously doesn't like me. I'm joking. Oh, I'll get on well with my mum. That's understandable from what I've heard. <laughs> That's why you're on so late at night, you know. <laughs> Have you never questioned this? <laughs> you know, I've uh, I've kind of worried about why I'm on so late, and then I, I walk outside and see the stream of people with their banners and so forth saying, take the captain off the air, so uh, part of me sleeps better at night knowing that a lot of people hate me. I think after 12 years of going to drive time, you should, you should have the plot by now. <laughs> <laughs> I could explain why my career sort of stalled about here. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> could be your underpants. Yep. <laughs> you've, you've obviously seen my thought days. <laughs> now, obviously, you're coming over to Australia very, very soon to uh, be part of one of the uh, most wonderful things on the planet, the Rock and Rebuild uh, at the Lyric Theatre in Sydney uh, on the 1st of yeah. May. How, how are we feeling about that? Is there anything unexpected we can uh, expect from yourself? No, I mean, uh, a mate of mine who's in, um, who is involved with um, you know A and Z Bank and he does he does uh, this thing one path with them. I you know, I know him, I did some stuff in the past. He rang me and he said, Look, you know, us guys are they just 
think if a lot of our people were affected by this, you know, would you come down? And um, it's a no-brainer, frankly, because Australia has never, never, not once been uh, less than welcoming to me or the band or the music. And, uh, you know, I, I know this sounds like Brown knows you, it's not. Um, I love being there. I like the vibe, I like the people. I've uh, been out in Queensland a lot. Um, you know, you're sitting at home, you're seeing this nightmare. And um, and then you see Christchurch, and then you see uh, the people in Japan, and you, you, you sort of think, what's going on? And, you know, it's, it's, it's a small little concert, and all the money, uh, all the tech money will go to this. But, you know, it, I think that, you know, Australia and New Zealand Japan, very coherent societies, they'll be able to rebuild, rebuild houses. Uh, rebuild jobs, uh, try and put back lives together. Obviously, the people who've been killed, uh, you know, you'll never be able to replace that in anyone's heart or head. But it's um, what I do is I play music. So if that in any way shows, that's the only way I can show support and sympathy. And uh, as I said, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a long way down for the one thing, but from my point of view, it's absolutely worth it. Well, absolutely. Like, uh, obviously, you, you follow the Nightcap, you're a huge fan of ours as we are of you, so you, you may or may not be aware that uh, we also do a lot of fundraising for uh, you know, these type of events that unfortunately shake the, the foundations of history. Now, no one that, yeah. that Nightcap is rich in money sense, but we are very rich in our love and respect for our fellow man, and uh, having just that uh, passion, as you do, uh, probably out of anyone on the, on the planet, have this passion and have the, the means to create such an, an awesome uh, event where so many people around the world get together to to fight for the, the same cause, and that's, of course, uh, helping these people rebuild. So the people that are listening tonight, how how here in Australia can we help you get uh, these donations in? It's not me. It isn't live aid three or four, it's it's a theatre in Sydney, it, it didn't come from me, so please, you know, it's not me going on a bandwagon or anything, it came from these guys I know <coughs> who work in the bank, and their customers were affected by it, there's very little they can do, uh, except, you know, maybe do something like this, and sort of call me up, because John knew me, and um and I said, yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't want to big this up mega. I mean, you know, the Australian people and from all around the world, you've seen sympathy and a huge amount of money being put in. You know, this will, this will be small. Um, from my point of view, it's, it's, it's simply, uh, I mean, you know, it sounds pathetic. I mean, you know, what can I do? So I, I play a bit of music. If that helps, fantastic. And I'm there. But, uh, I mean, you know, Australia has already demonstrated, you know, it's, uh, and, and then, you know, straight after, well, during the floods, and you had the stuff out in, out in Perth, so you've been through a hell of a year, and um, I think you're in a part of the world where nature will have its way, and, uh, you know, what's really sort of psychologically interesting as a human being is that um, we like to think that our lives are fairly fixed. That we that we uh, they're fairly solid, um, and in fact there's no solidity at all. It's entirely fluid from one day to the next, and that that really is unsettling for humans. We have this hubris that we control. We can control everything. We control nothing. Mm. An act of nature comes along and slaps us in the face. We can't control the economy. We can't control ourselves. And least of all, we can control nature. And when that happens. Uh, as I say, we get this terrible shock, and there's there's two reactions. There's one reaction: you throw money at it to make it better because you think that will resolve things. It doesn't. Look at Haiti; they they suffered a massive earthquake. It's still a mess because they're an impoverished society, totally with corrupt government as a result of poverty. Mm. So, in my case, I've spent 26 years fighting that man-made condition, poverty. There's no need for poverty. I know that sounds silly and glib. There's absolutely no need for it. And uh, it's not in our interest to have it. It's in our interest that everyone has a mean, stable uh, type of economy so that we can all trade with each other. And it ceases wars, it stops corruption, it stops people being hungry. But floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, there's nothing we can do about that. And so we, we remain dismayed by that, and uh, we try and put things back in place very quickly. Well, 
well, it doesn't work like that, and there will be other uh, earthquakes and floods, hopefully not uh, in your neck of the woods, but um, you need to, we need to be constantly aware of this, you know, this, this life thing is a moment, and um, if you can show some support for those who undergo those shocks, then why wouldn't you do that? Absolutely true words have never been spoken, uh, Bob. Absolutely true words have never been spoken, and th I think what you'll see here in Australia when you come to visit is we we are a battling nation, and we we do help our fellow men, and um, that that's the most important thing to to take away from this. No matter who it is, whether it's someone you've never met or it could be your best friend, everyone will always jump in and, and help their their fellow men here in Australia. Well, we'd like to think so, anyway. Well, I think it's part of your history, you know. Um uh, you know, it's 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 been a rough old ride. I mean, I know you call yourselves a lucky country, and in, in many, many, many regards, you are. And you know, one of the great it. global shocks that we're going through is the financial shock. And if you look at Bob Zelik, who I know is the president of the World Bank, yesterday, he said the world is one shock away from absolute disaster, and by that he means one financial shock away, and it could be, you know, the ballooning U.S. debt problem or something else, but if that goes down, if, you know, then everything goes down, and uh, we live on this very, very thin crust of probability and possibility, and uh, anything that we can do together to shore that up helps, and as I say, you know, you've been calling yourself a lucky country, and in the financial situation you are, because you're a commodities economy, and you're booming because you're selling all your commodities to the Chinese, which is fabulous, because we need the Chinese to be producing. But at the same time, nature comes along, just gives you a slap across the face, and it's more than a slap, because people die, and lives are uprooted, and homes are destroyed, and you're, you're a hardy bunch of sods, you know, you get back up on the horse and you say, oh, I'm just going to build that house again. Um, and that's, that's sort of, in my head, it may not be, I might not be accurate, but it's certainly what I imagine you love to be, hard notes down there, you know, but, you know, totally admirable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd, I'd love to stay and chat with you for long periods of time, uh, Sir Bob, but uh, unfortunately I know you are a very, very busy man and I do hope uh, I'll get the chance to uh, to meet you on the uh, the 1st of May in Sydney where you will be. And, I'd love to, yeah. Um, hopefully your people and my people get together and you know they work it out, but there's a pretty good chance that hopefully you may see me and I can uh, cover this a lot more. There's uh, so many people from the NICAP Nation that have been looking forward to uh, to hearing from you and hopefully this is not the last time we'll have you on the show, Sir Bob. Great, mate. Good uh, talking, Joe. I'll see you and I'll see you to what I'm down there. Absolutely, and have a, uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for your time. Sir Bob, yeah. off, ladies and Bye. gentlemen. Bye.